This is the Lancer Locker Show on KYNT. Now, let's talk some Mount Marty University athletics with the coaches, as well as your host and the voice of Mount Marty University athletics, Tell Tanner. Let's do it. It's the Lancer Locker on a Monday in Yankton. We're talking all sorts of Mount Marty athletics today with the two head coaches of Mount Marty University basketball. Men's and women's basketball just finished up their seasons on Saturday and Wednesday of this last week. The men's team finished up their season on Wednesday, final game of the year versus uh, Midland University. They finished with the 6-20 overall record, 2-18 in conference. Women's basketball finishes 2-20 in conference, 6-22 overall. Both seasons were just controlled by the injuries. I won't lie to you. A lot of injuries to this Lancer team. The way Colin Othier always said, the only consistent thing about this season was the inconsistency. They ran starting lineups on starting lineups, different ways to get guys involved, different ways to get people on the court. It was weird. I, it was a wild season for the Lancers, but despite it, they were able to grow as young, young rosters. Both teams led by freshmen and sophomores throughout the year. Bid farewell to their couple of seniors they do have, and they're reloading for next year. Next year in the G Pack. Very excited for Lancer basketball. With that said, let's go to that week in review. We'll start it off with the basketball teams. Might as well, since we're talking to the two coaches today. We're first going to be talking with Alan Bertram, then Coach Colin Othier. I did speak with both of them earlier today. Uh, they got to get out there. They got to go recruiting, man. They've got plenty to do. So we spoke earlier today, and we'll be playing those interviews coming up. The Mount Marty women's team, once again, 6-22 and overall, 2-20 and in conference. They did get that final win of the season on Saturday. They beat the College of St. Mary Flames, 87 to 62 in that ball game. Lancers played very well. Sydney Thuey set a new career high with 21 points. She had five rebounds and two assists. Kayla Martinez had 20 points with nine rebounds. Maria Parsley had 12 points, eight assists, and Jaden Jensen had 12 points as well. Katie Hovey, one of their seniors, had 13 rebounds and seven points as well. Wild. They played very well. Very good. 87-62 win. The men's team finished up their season on Wednesday with the loss to Midland. Once again, they finished 6-20 and overall, 2-18 and in conference. It's been almost a week since their season did, and the women had that one final Saturday game. In other news for other teams going on here, in terms of track and field, the track and field indoor championships are happening in Brookings, this weekend, they start Thursday, they go through Saturday, and the Lancers are sending a pretty strong contingent there. They're sending 14 athletes to the NAI Indoor Track and Field National Championships, including seven individual events and two relay teams. It's going to be pretty cool for the Lancers up this weekend up in Brookings. We'll make sure to have the results next Monday for you on the Lancer Locker. That's this weekend up in Brookings, South Dakota. In terms of softball and baseball, both teams are going to Florida this weekend. Both teams going to Florida. The Mount Murray softball team is 3-7 and seven overall. They had this last weekend off to kind of recover, recuperate before going to Florida this weekend. The men's baseball team did play a couple of games this last weekend. They got the weekend sweep over Mayville State University. Beat them in four matchups. They won game one 12 to two, game two eight to one, game three eight to zero, and game four eight to seven. They did beat Mayville State in all four contests in home baseball in February. They played at home and it was 60 degrees and sunny. It was beautiful for them. I wish I could have been there. It was Awesome. They go to Florida as well. And here's how the schedule kind of works. Both baseball and softball teams are going to be playing 10 games in about five days span, five or six days. And they're going to be playing eight different teams, eight different teams, 10 games in about a five or six day span down in Florida starting this week weekend. We'll keep you updated next week. Uh, we'll be in the middle of that 10-game stretch next Monday on the Lancer Locker. But we'll obviously have day-to-day -day results for you on our morning shows with Jeff Erickson, our Totally Yankton morning show as well, noon and five with Josh Bolter. Anyways, that's our week in review. We got to go ahead and take that break now. We'll come back with the head coaches of the Lancer men's women's basketball programs. We'll start it off with Alan Bertram talking women's basketball season recap when we return. This is the Lancer Locker on KYNT. 
I'm Tel Tanner. We were founded on innovation and a passion to help our customers. This is Kenny Wicks at Aztec Yankton. We want our employees to thrive and succeed. Our core values are more than something we list on a wall. The team continues to grow, so consider a career with us. We have openings in a variety of departments, sign-on bonuses, double overtime, immediate benefits like retirement savings, paid holidays, bonus earnings, tuition reimbursement, and more. Build your career with a group that's built to connect from rock to road. Stop by 700 West 21st Street or apply at AzTechJobs.com. After a cancer diagnosis, you take it one hour, one day, one milestone at a time. But you want more, more adventures, more time, more hellos. As the region's only accredited cancer network, Avera Cancer Institute is your partner in making more a reality. We'll pinpoint the specific treatment that's best for you. You'll have a 24-7 support system to call with questions. Visit avera.org slash cancer care. Avera, moving health forward. Looking for the perfect meal that hits the spot every time? Look no further than Boss's Pizza and Chicken. At Boss's Pizza and Chicken, they're serving up piping hot, mouth-watering pizzas with all of your favorite toppings. And that's not all. The crispy roasted chicken is a taste sensation that will keep you coming back for more. Whether you're dining in with family and friends or enjoying a night in, order Boss's Pizza and Chicken of Yankton, where every bite is a moment of pure satisfaction. This sports season, keep your athlete hydrated with sparkling ice. Choose from a rainbow of colors and flavors, each sourced from nature with vitamins, antioxidants, and zero sugar. Sparkling ice, tease your taste buds with tropical flavor. And rehydrate with Prime Hydration, the perfect combination of flavor and function, changing how you refresh, replenish, and refuel. With five awesome flavors and no added sugar, you're getting the taste you want without anything you don't. Prime Hydration, the perfect boost for every endeavor. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Core Trust helps your business thrive with checking, online bill pay, small business loans, credit card processing, Local approval and support for government grants and loans. Investments to grow your hard-earned assets. And insurance to protect them. All from Core Trust, the community bank that's right down the street and everywhere you want us to be. Visit coretrustbank.com today. Member FDIC. I learned a lot of sayings from my dad. One of them was, do one thing, do it better than anyone else. At Dakota Mac, That one thing is long-term, fixed-rate loans for ag real estate. If you're considering expanding your ag operation or restructuring your debt, give Dakota Mac a call. They'll be happy to walk you through your options. Hi, it's Jeff Wolfgram from Dakota Mac. Call us at 800-682-4578 to learn how Dakota Mac products can work for you. All right, back here on the Lancer Locker. My name is Tel Tanner. We go now to women's basketball from the Great Plains Athletic Conference with the head coach of the program in Alan Bertram. Coach Bertram, you go down to Omaha on Saturday. You finish up the season with a win. You get a couple of seniors that played pretty well. And you have a couple of young players, three of them, that all played amazing. That was a great way to wrap up the season. Can you tell me what you saw from your program? It really was. I thought it was kind of a culmination of everybody putting things together and and, uh, by far the best, you know, four quarters of basketball that we've played all season, which is exactly what you want to end a year. Uh, it was nice to see uh, girls like Sydney Thuy having a career a career game. She had 21 points, which is a career high for her. And as a sophomore, a great performance. Kayla Martinez, one of our other sophomores, finished with 20. And and then you have some per, just outlier performances, like with Maria Parsley, another sophomore, going for 12 points, eight, uh, eight assists, I think she had. And then uh, um, how about Katie Hovey finishing out her senior year with – 13 rebounds from the point guard position. She's 5'7". How does she do that? Yeah, she's a she's a, just a tough cookie. You know, she's a girl that kind of, when you talk to her, she loves to rebound the basketball. And so uh, I think that's probably when one of her greatest strengths and uh, what a way to end your college career by going out and having thir- 13 boards in, in your last game. That was impressive for sure. And then your other senior, Brianna Jensen, came in and hit two clutch three-pointers, one of them way downtown, which was fun to see. Yeah, it really was. And for her, you know, she's, uh, you know, she came in, that was kind of her forte, even though she's 6'2", and uh, we really had to kind of transform her game into be more of a post 
oriented a player, but you know this year because of the offense that we uh, switched up to, it allowed her to be a little bit more perimeter bound as well. And it was nice to see her not only just hit a couple threes on Saturday, but they were at key times and really helped us extend our lead and crucial moments. And um, you know, Brianna just it was again a great opportunity for her to finish out her college career and and uh, hitting those two threes is a great way to do it. Well, you finish up the season with that win over the College of St. Mary. I wanted to talk about that, kind of the big three in terms of next season. Sydney Thuey, Kayla Martinez, Jaden Jensen, legend scoring all year long. And then you've got a couple of players, Maria Parsley, who came off that ACL injury and just looked better and better and better all throughout the season coming back. Emma Jarovsky's coming back from injury next season. You've got a great group of freshmen coming in next season. Man, this future looks bright, Coach. Yeah, we're really excited about it. You know, you, you have to go through a little bit of um, growing pains when you're dealing with a lot of young kids. And and uh, I really felt as a year has moved on, you got to see some of the strengths of each one of those kids that you mentioned. And, you know, when you have three kids, um, you know, in Sydney and Kayla and, and uh, Jaden, who two sophomores and a freshman, all three average right around that 10 point per game mark. So you got three double figure scores um, for you um, coming back that are super young. And they all sh- they all play differently, you know. Sydney's obviously a great post player, and Kayla, um, everybody knows about her three point prowess. But Jaden is kind of that outlier where she can score from inside and outside, and kind of d- does a multiple things. And then we're really excited about Emma. Obviously, that was a, an unfortunate thing for our basketball team getting hurt second day of practice this year and missing twenty one games. And just um, you know, even the last part you know, that she was playing, she would not a, she's not one hundred percent, but. She's one of our best players when she's healthy, and so to get her back in that mix is a very exciting thing for us. For those of you that remember Emma Jarofsky from her freshman and sophomore year at Mount Marty, there's a solid chance she'd have been your leading scorer this year going in. She's just that good. It's going to be good to get a, a player like that back going into her season year. She'll be a leader next year as well. Yeah, and people don't – like uh, going into this year, she had a tremendous summer, and we really expected her to be one of our top two players by far. And uh, just an unfortunate um, situation. But we're, really what we missed the most about Emma on the floor this year was what you just said. She's a phenomenal leader. And when you've got a bunch of young kids, you need that extra leadership. And so that we really missed that. And then one girl we you mentioned, but I didn't talk a lot about, Maria Parsley, the last eight games this season, has shown what she's capable of coming off that ACL injury. And she's scored double figures multiple times for us in the last eight, nine games. And she's going to be a, a very good player in this conference. A couple more players I wanted to mention. Kyra Grease, kind of your sixth woman this year. Really feisty on the defensive end of things. I like calling her a bulldog. And then Isabel Elwine comes in and hits threes. He told me she's doing better off that injury as well. Next season, what do those two players look like? Well, we just love Kyra. Um, you know, her ability to just defend and really get after it. She's she's the hardest working girl we have on the floor when she's on the floor. And, and she really has, has taken ownership of wanting to be the best perimeter defender that we have. And um, I thought she just did a tremendous job this year. And and Isabel Elwine is going to be a special player. And I think a lot of people were able to see that this year. It was unfortunate the last three games that she was not able to play because of that injury. But, you know, she shoots a three-point shot at a, at a high clip. She was our best three-point shooter on the season. And, again, just she's just a freshman. And so um, as she continues to grow and get stronger and uh, adds a little bit to her game, she's going to be another special player for us. Coach, I wanted to talk about some of the prep for next season and some of the ways you prep in the non-con this year. One of the ways that you got ready for conference play was playing up a couple levels. You played up uh, at NCAA D1 and D2. You go play Dakota State, who was ranked at the time in the NAI you play them. You play USF. You play USD. You know, you have these games that kind of get you ready for a GPAC play. What do you think those do for you, and are you going to do some of those next year with your non-con scheduling? Well, we most definitely will because we, we feel that our, our, our preseason schedule, our non-conference schedule, really needs to help prepare us for the GPAC. And, and, you know, when you're playing, there's a lot of teams in our GPAC conference that could go D, to the D2 level and, and win and compete at a high level at the Division II level. And so we really got to prepare our kids for what they're going to see defensively, the level of physicality, and just the, the ability for those teams to be so consistent. And so when you play up, you're going to see that on a regular basis, and I think it helps our kids mentally. It's just tough to do when you're really young, like we were this year, but um, those games are very important to us. 
All right, that finishes up non-con in the conference play. You're able to get a couple of wins over the College of St. Mary. You were really competitive uh, in a lot of these games with the GPAC. What do you think some of the steps you need to take this offseason are to kind of get on the other end of those fourth quarter comebacks? Well, you know, you, you saw it a lot this year. Uh, even against some of the best teams in our conference, for three of the four quarters, we played right with them. And then we would just have a stretch where – where they would take the game over. And a lot of that was just, again, um, our youth and our lack of leadership, I think, because we were so young. Um, and then just consistency. Uh, we, we, have to, we have to get stronger. We have to get more consistent with our outside shooting. The games that we would struggle a little bit were the nights that we were 20, in the low 20 percentiles from the three-point line. And then you know, adding pieces to what we've got. We've got a great core right now. Um, but for us to take that next step, that core has got to get bigger. And it's got to get bigger with girls who can come in and make immediate impacts. And so that's going to be a big piece as we get into the final stages of our recruiting class. As you just teased the recruiting class, let's go to them. This is kind of a different one this year. The last couple of years, you've been bringing in everybody that really is a Lancer at heart. You've been bringing in a lot of players and then working with them. This year, you're bringing back almost everybody. You graduate only two seniors that are on the court. So you're able to really be choosy with your freshmen. Who's coming in next year? Well, we got five freshmen right now coming in, and uh, we're really excited about this class. You know, obviously, uh, Claire Tereshinsky right here from in Yankton, South Dakota, has had a great career for Yankton High School, and we re really feel she's got a great upside as she continues to grow as a player. And, and so we're excited about her. Lauren Grind from uh, Tri-Valley High School just down the road in, in Colton, South Dakota, a 1,000-point score at the Class A level, um, just a tremendous athlete, good guard, and can, can score at multiple levels. So excited about her. And then we've got three out, out of state girls right now. Um, Kenley Anderson, six foot one post player from Black Dunk, Minnesota is going to add some depth to our post. And, um, and then um, Emily Huxtable from Colorado Springs, Colorado, just a lights out shooter. Uh, she can, she shoots it at a high clip, low 40 percentile from the three point line and can really fill it up. And then we're really excited about Morgan Fisher from Oatana High School in Oatana, Minnesota. She's a 5'11 um, girl who can play in out, shooting 40% from the three point line in Class 5A basketball in Minnesota. Um, just a, she's a girl who can come in and make an immediate impact right away for us. And then we're, we've already got one transfer signed, um, Stevie Fallis. Some of our local people might remember her. She was a two time Class A All Stater here in South Dakota. She's had a tremendous career down at Northeast Community College. And, Norfolk, Nebraska, and averaging 16 points a game as a point guard. So she can really score it, but she's a great facilitator and a phenomenal on-ball defender. And so really it allows us to bring a point guard in who can help take the reins from what Katie's leaving behind. Coach, thank you very much talking about your recruiting class. As you go into this next season, finish up 2023-2024, what is your final message to Lancer fans, your seniors, everybody who supported you this year? Well, I just I think our support has just continued to grow. It, it's so it's been such a huge blessing to see um, Simple continue to um, just get bigger and bigger and bigger with our fan base. And I think the people um, do appreciate how hard our girls work and the energy that they're putting in. But we also appreciate how hard our fans work and the energy that they're giving to our kids. And um, we just can't say enough thank you to to those people who come out and support our our program in multiple ways. And I want to thank our administration at Mount Marty. They do a phenomenal job of creating um, our best atmosphere and, and our best opportunities for our student athletes. And they really have that in, in their minds with everything they do. So I can't thank the administration enough at Mount Marty University. And, um, you know, really to our seniors, they're the ones who, who have been here since I've been here. And they just work their tails off and have done so many tremendous things for us. But I'm really excited about the kids we have. Um, they're willing to work. They're willing to do what it takes to be successful. And I just think you're going to continue to see our program take another step forward next year. Coach, I want to take some time to thank you personally as well for letting me obviously ride down on the bus with you for all these games. It's how we get to cover them on KYN TV is these coaches let us ride along with them and experience the team just so we can go cover these games. It's how we get to bring them to you and for feeding me as well. I enjoy the Chick-fil-A. Thank yeah, you very well, much, Coach. Well, and I would say this too. I, I, I get so many comments from people that – can't get to our games, especially our away games, and and such a huge shout out to KYNT and yourself, Tell for for providing that service. Um, I know so many people, not just in South Dakota, but across our country, who are um, relatives and family members or or former Lancers 
who utilize that service to be able to watch our kids play and to listen to the games. And if it wasn't for you guys, that would not be possible. So we we really appreciate it, bud. I appreciate you, Coach. And the best part about that is it's we're working to get better. Obviously, on our end, in the Simple Arena itself, there's going to be plans for the future. Added a video board this year. There's more in stock for the next couple of years. Oh, it's an exciting time. All these basketball teams are young. They've got an amazing core that's going to get older and get better. I can't wait to see the next couple of years. Coach. Yeah, I, I wish it started tomorrow. <laughs> It'll start soon enough. Thank you very much for coming in and joining with, with me and talking with me today, Coach. I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you. This is the Lancer Locker here on KYNT. Let's go ahead and take a break. We'll finish up women's basketball. Come back with Colin Off your men's basketball in a couple minutes. This is KYNT. Beef, pork, seafood, poultry, and more. All at the Meat Lodge in Yankton. Get top quality meats at great prices. They have specialty items like lamb, brisket, mahi-mahi, crab legs, and lobster. They even have non-meat options like dimmick cheese, pickled items, seasonings, and sauces. For your convenience, you can call and order curbside pickup or order online at meatlodge.com. The Meat Lodge in Yankton, on the way to the lake on Highway 52. At Triple Time Rudy's, not only do you get top-notch fuel to keep you on the move, but it's a destination for delicious local treats. You'll find quality South Dakota products like Dimmick Cheese and premium meats from the Kaler and Renner Lockers. It's your community's pit stop for more than just fuel. Triple Time Rudy's supports schools and events and provides fuel discounts to Yankton's largest employers. For all your daily fill-ups and convenience needs, stop by Triple Time Rudy's at 17th and Broadway. It's Ford Truck Month at Lewis and Clark Ford, and we have some big news. First, we now have a great selection of new 2023 F-150s on the lot. Second, we can offer up to $10,000 off your new Ford truck. And third, you can buy with 1.9% interest for 72 months. 1.9% for 72 months. It all adds up as the best deals on new Ford F-150s we've had in a long time. Ford Truck Month now at Lewis and Clark Ford, 4th and Capital, Yankton. New starting wages at Parker of Yankton. Parker of Yankton is excited to announce a new generous wage increase. This wage increase includes all production positions, assemblers, machine ops, setups, and material handlers, plus a second shift differential. Parker provides some of the best benefits in the area. And in case you missed it, new increased wages. Apply today at Parker.com. Parker, engineering your success. Carbless handcrafted premium cocktails are a ready-to-drink vodka and tequila-based cocktail with no carbs, no sugar, gluten-free, and only 100 calories. It's guaranteed to be bursting with flavor in every sip. The Carbless Mix Pack is sure to please any crowd with a compilation of all the best-selling ready-to-drink cocktails, including sweet, citrus, and a twist of tequila flavors like lemon-lime, black raspberry, cranberry, and margarita. Grab some today. Carbless Cocktails. Liss is more. At Pizza Ranch, we want you to pick and choose. This is Annie from Yankton Pizza Ranch. And right now, our online carryout deal is pick and choose two or more of select items for just $7.99 each. Choose from a medium one-topping pizza, a medium cheesy ranch sticks, a single chicken fries, an eight-piece boneless wings, a chocolate chip cookie, a small cactus bread, or four 20-ounce beverages. Carry these out and your dinner is done. Pick and choose at PizzaRanch.com. All right, back here on the Lancer Locker, now with the head coach of the Mount Marty Men's Basketball Program, Coach Colin Othier. Coach, this season was one of those seasons where you had a very, very young team that played really, really well at times, played a little tougher at times. You had a lot of injuries. Young guys were able to get opportunities. Old guys were kind of able to show their stuff, especially in that last game. Josh Arlt was able to be fun. This was a fun season, but a tough season. Can you give me your thoughts on the year? Yeah, it, it was a, it, it was a hard season. Um, I, I think from everybody's standpoint, uh, and not getting the results that everybody wanted um, was a challenge. And then just the the amount of adversity we just faced, and, and and it was almost on a daily basis of things. We talked about the only thing consistent about this year was the inconsistencies, um, the the injuries, just the the things that kind of just would, would would come up throughout the season. Um, really, just weighed on guys, and and it was and it was hard and. 
Um, you know, we went through staff stuff to start the year uh, where, where these, our assistant coach uh, had resigned a week before our first game. And, and so it just kind of, you know, it, it just made a challenge throughout the, uh, throughout the year as we were navigating some of those things. Um, I thought our guys did a really, really good job. I, I thought um, our practices, even towards the end of the year, our guys are so focused, competitive, uh, kept a, with a desire of, of getting better and, and seeing the big picture of things. So uh, challenging year from a results standpoint, um, but I do think that we made a lot of strides in many other areas. One of the things that was kind of wild about this season, certainly something I've never seen before. I know I haven't been doing this near as long as somebody like you have, but the injuries that just kept piling up. I'd never seen a team get that many in a season. What are some of the things that Mount Marty's going to try to do for next year to minimize those? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question because, you know, sometimes when it's a, a, a same injury for everybody, you kind of take a look at. Uh, what you're doing, a uh, playing surface standpoint, or uh, um, you know areas in the weight room, um, but we covered everything from head to toe. Um, we had more concussions this year than than I ever have, and those were res- you know happening in in, in games. Um, to to labrums and shoulders, we had two guys with labrums and shoulders. To to wrist injuries, to to um, you know some hip flexor, labrum and hip area stuff, hernias, knees, ankles, feet, I mean, you name it. Um, we, we pretty much crossed it off the, the list. Um, it, it was a very, very unique year from that standpoint. Um, and I think it's just, it's continuing to get in the weight room. It's continuing to, to lift um, and, and strengthen those muscles up in the uh, areas around some of those deficiencies. And then some of it, it just it just happens, and sometimes when it rains, it pours, and and it really got contagious for us this year, unfortunately, um, and, and steamrolled, and and it, it happened to to start the tone of the year, unfortunately, when Josh, um, you know, he got his concussion, and and Cole, um, missing his first couple of weeks, really, really was hard to get out to a fast start, um, in some games that that we know we 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 could and should, um, and then it just steamrolled, and then Josh comes back and is is playing well. Um, it's like adding a mid-year transfer. I mean, he, he was just after that student teaching stuff and he dealt with the concussion as well. Um, was playing great 10 points in 10 minutes and then just has the worst ankle sprain roll injury I've ever, I've ever seen or witnessed on film. Um, he played on senior night, but he, he was about 70%. I mean, he was doing what he could and he's a tough kid and he tried to get back uh, all spring semester and he couldn't. It's just, it was, uh, it, it was part of it. Um, we, we just got to keep focusing on that. We got to hit the weight room hard. We got to lift around. Really, we've got a couple of guys that are going to go for surgeries here um, and, and we need those to all go well and then uh, and attack the rehab so we can end up having a good uh, rest of the spring and summer going into next year. Coach, one of the good things about kind of a season like that is a lot of young players who normally wouldn't get that type of opportunity did get that opportunity. A couple of guys came in and really made the most of the minutes that were handed to them. Can you talk talk about that for a moment? Yeah, I thought uh, I, I thought Josh did a great job with the rugby Riken throughout the year. Um, I, they had a previous relationship because of Rex, I think, and and some of some of their connections. Um, you know, Damon Opdahl um, really helped out midway through the year. We lost Noah Allen due to concussion uh, in the middle of the year, and and Damon was able to really step in and and uh, and, and make some shots for us, and really really help space the floor. Um, I, our, our young guys, I, I thought, did a good job coming along. They were wide-eyed a good portion of the year, which is is very, very common in college basketball for freshmen, especially what we were asking some of them to do um, and some of the minutes that, that they were playing um, and the physicality and the speed and and just adjusting to the length and uh, that you're going against every single day. We, we talked about you're going harder at the rim than you've ever gone before. You have to shoot it over somebody that's a foot taller than you've ever had to shoot it before. And and by the way, that guy can bench 300 pounds and you know he's 23 and might have a kid. Like I mean, it's just it's different. And, and so you you uh, you just gotta. That's college basketball. Uh, but I was really really proud of our young guys for stepping up and and really um, getting some of that experience, um, experiencing both success and failure to help motivate and drive uh, for this offseason. Let's talk about some of the highlights of the season. You mentioned it a little bit, that Bellevue game. This was right as you got Anuk Acott back, you get Josh Arlt back, you get some of these guys finally healthy or ready to play here. You go down to Bellevue in a holiday tournament, kind of on a tough little stretch there, a couple games you needed to win, and you win them both. You're able to win Bellevue. You had Noah Allen come off the bench for the injured Josh Arlt, hit some really clutch Mm -hmm. shots before halftime. Tashlin Day went crazy in the second half as he does. You beat Haskell in the next game out, 82-80, and then you beat number 13 Northwest on a walk-off buzzer beater 73 
70. That was a three game stretch that really showed what this program's potential is, what you can do when you're able to compete. What was going on through your on, in your head in that stretch? Yeah, really enjoyed um, the time we were able to spend during that uh, break. You know, that that was a big, big boost for us um, was just it was basketball. And, and so there wasn't the learning of the class dynamics and everything else and all the other distractions. It was just we could focus on basketball and each other. Our guys really, really uh, worked hard. Um, they really bought into some things. We simplified some stuff. Um, and it was good adding some extra pieces, um, some guys that kind of give us a, a, a little bit of a lift. Um, obviously, a, a nook can change some things, both offensively and defensively, uh, with what we can do. Um, and, and so that was that was a nice boost. But, you know, having Josh... Um, practice and after that christmas break stuff it just he he just uh helped drive us and and he was our he's our vocal leader he was kind of the rudder for our ship and gave us direction and and uh, on the floor and um uh, that carried over and then it, it just kind of unfortunately fizzled out after that uh northwestern game um great game um the the entire game i thought our guys did a great job i, I thought our effort in that game was really really good our attention to detail um what was really good our attention to the scouting report and and what we were doing um guys were just so so locked in for it and and yeah it, it was able to show what we were what we were capable of um the hardest part in college basketball is just the consistency um and being able to do it on a consistent basis every single game Coach, one of the things that I thought was really fun about that Northwestern game, obviously uh, the game-winning shot got on Sports Center. They talked about it all night long. It was not the first time that Mount Marty in the last couple seasons has been in national sports media. Obviously, your team getting things like that. You've had a couple game winners in the past, the football team, the whole party with Marty hashtag that was going when they beat presentation. People are starting to starting to notice Mount Marty here. It's not just that school that's in Yankton, a, a place that people want to go as we turn to recruits. Why do people want to come to Mount Marty? Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, that shot, the, the best part about that was um, what it did for the university. Um, getting that airtime, having having videos go viral, um, having people talk about it, it does bring up the, uh, the the party with Marty, with Marty and McGee um, stuff at, with, with ESPN. Um, all those things are, are, are great. And, and this is a phenomenal situation. It, it's a hidden, it's a hidden gem that's on the rise. I mean, with, with what president long is doing at the university, um, in terms of growing our university, growing our endowment, um, continuing to invest in the students on the campus, growing our academic offerings and our programs. I mean, it's just, it's such a hidden gem that is, uh, that is just sitting there and it's waiting to burst through. Um, and it's our job to continue to help play our part and, and give it that boost and give it that lift, um, to help bring some of the recognition of what. Uh, of what Mount Marty University is. I think that's been evident in our last couple of games. Um, I, I had so many people talk to me about the atmosphere at those games, um, why and what changed and, and later on. And and there's a, there's a couple things to that. And I, I do want to make sure to give a shout out to the football team and, and Micheletti. Um, I, I thought those those kids did an awesome job. But it was, it was more than just them. There were so many student athletes that were in there. Uh, but those guys are bringing signs and uh, and all the other stuff. So um, it, it's uh, it, it's growing this and and continuing to cultivate um, a winning vibe, a winning culture, um, a, a winning feeling um, that that resonates on campus, and it's something that we strive for every day. The environment of the Simple Arena in the second half of the season, January and February, might have been the best environment I saw in the GPAC all year. We visited every single school in the GPAC. I was lucky enough to go with you for that one. That Mount Marty environment in February and late January was probably the best I saw in the GPAC. That's got to be why some of these recruits want to go here as we turn to them. Uh, can you tell me about the environment one more time? Yeah, I mean, it, it does. It makes a, a big boost, but it helps everybody. It, it helps make uh, visits uh, good. When, when somebody visits for a game, and they see that and it's a student athlete that uh, wants to play another sport they see that they they see that how much fun people are having in the student section and and i would say a good student section gets warned at least once a game and and ours did that last game and and, and it was awesome because they didn't get warned for doing anything egregious or disrespectful they just were having fun and and, and maybe got a little too close to the floor and that's part of it and that that happens everywhere like like, like you said um but it is it, it, it's a huge selling point um getting that atmosphere created i think people um really really started seeing what 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 our guys were doing and and some of this 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 picture coming together here um and, and where we're going um because it wasn't just our students too it was the community i mean our, our our crowd that that lancer landing area up there was packed i mean it just uh it, it, it was awesome there to, to end the year um and we want to build on that momentum we want to bottle it up and and have that um set that tone right away for next year and and for our guys to be able to reciprocate that for other sports as well is really key um and it, it does help tremendously in recruiting 
Let's talk about recruiting. We've teased it long enough. Tell me about some of these recruits coming in to be impact players for the Lancers next year. Yeah, it's fun. You know, we have a young man who has been committed for almost a year, it, it seems like. Mark Detter up at, at Baltic, um, you know, and, and made his decision early, did his work early, um, got on campuses early and, and knew this is where he wanted to be and, and what he wanted to be a part of um, and, and excited to have him. They're, they're having a, a really, really good year. Um, Jet Janvrin, um out in Rapid City, West River, um, is coming in and, and just a tough kid, uh, high IQ, um, a, a leader on the floor, gets guys in the in the right spots, makes others around him better. Um, it's had a tough. I mean, there sometimes you're you're a little bit at the mercy of what you have around you, and and uh, and he's battled. I know um, a couple trips East River here. And, um, he's he's been their leading scorer majority of the time throughout the year, and then and then uh, Ty and Bus and Ty's a little bit more of a unique one. He's coming for football and basketball. Um, his dad, I've, I've known for years, have coached uh, many of his former players. Um, Dyson Peterson, uh, played for his dad at Sturgis as well. Um, and, and Ty is just another tough kid. Um, a, a kid that is going to play hard. He's going to compete that can make a difference. He's having a good year at Pier this year. Um, and so it's just excited for, for those guys. And then we have, we have some other ones that, um, we've been, we've been recruiting pretty hard. Um, and we're, we're looking forward to, um, oftentimes right now there's, there's a few factors with it. Seasons playing out. Usually in the basketball culture, uh, they usually wait till the end of the year. Um, and, and then the other thing that's really has made things challenging has been the FAFSA. Uh, the government changed the FAFSA. Um, they said it was going to be ready by a date. It wasn't. They pushed it back. They pushed it back. And now we keep pushing it back. And and it, that does matter. It, it, it does because kids do want to know the cost. And our I, I will say this, our, our admission staff um, and Greg have done a tremendous job of, of trying to make things as easy as they can, communicate with the students and their family on, on potential costs and where it is without giving actual specific stuff. Um, they, they've, they've worked tirelessly in, in that department to make it um, – take a little bit of a load off the coaches and trying to figure all that out for the students and their family. Um, and very, very appreciative of them for doing that. I really look forward to seeing some of those young men in Lancer uniforms next year. Coach, as we finish up this 2023-2024 athletic season, do you have any final message for Lancer fans, your seniors, everybody that came out to support you this year? Yeah, for our seniors, there's just so much appreciation for them. Um, I, I just, uh, you know, they wanted to make sure that uh, we could try to give them the best basketball experience that they can. We can never control the results. That that's always part of it. But um, how we treat them, what we do, the experiences that that we uh, that we try to give them, um, you know, uh, that that stuff keeps me up at night. Um, one hundred percent does. You know, for us, we've we've been we've been looking at it, but we had um, having eight freshmen, seven sophomores, um, and we're we're the youngest team in the Midwest by by a long, long range. And in college basketball, the adage is you want to get old and stay old. And in our time here, we've gotten younger. Um, because we've been going the high school route and continuing to recruit really, really good, talented local kids um, and, and wanting to build the, our program and set our foundation and, and get our consistency and stability where it needs to be. Um, and so I, I look forward to finally changing that and getting older um, next year where, where we, we may not be the youngest team in the entire country. Um, I do know in the, in the Midwest we, we were. Um, and, and are. And so looking forward to continuing to get older, um, having a good spring and summer of, of working uh, with our guys, the development with them, um, and, and how motivated they're going to be to continue to get better and work and get this, uh, this ship uh, going in the right direction. Coach, I want to thank you for your time coming in and talking with me today all season long, pregame, postgame. You come up and talk with me and you even feed me. I don't know if anybody, if we've talked about that enough, but I'm lucky enough to ride the bus with these guys through all of these road trips. That's how we get to cover Lancer basketball on the road, and he always feeds me postgame. So I appreciate you so much for that and for coming to talk with me, Coach. You always ask for those Omaha trips because you know you get raising canes anytime we go yes. to Omaha. So I know you want more games scheduled in, in Omaha and Nebraska area the best that we can. We'll, we'll work on that for you. Uh, very very appreciative of KYNT and all that you guys do. Um, you, you've been awesome. I've had so many people comment to me on that um, with just how good of an experience it is when they aren't able to be here uh, to, to watching the games in person, the, of just how confident they are to be able to go online, whether it's watching at home or listening on the road um, and, and what you do. So very, very appreciative to you um, and, and all the people that follow Lancer Basketball and, and know that we're going to continue to work. And, and that uh, that started the very next day after our uh, on Thursday morning, and it will uh, it will continue all off season for us as we get the ship going the right way. Can't wait for 2024, 2025, Coach. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. This is the Lancer Locker here on KYNT. Let's go ahead and finish things up. We'll take a break, come back, wrap up the show in a couple of minutes. Powerful changes occur when people unite. At United Way of Greater Yankton, we unite people to activate positive change and to make lives better. 
Help us build a brighter future for all through access to health care, basic needs, a good education, and financial stability. Learn more about United Way of Greater Yankton, our mission, our programs, and how you can help online at yanktonunitedway.org. Together, united, we are building a brighter future for all. Ben is in a sticky situation. I got so excited for my fresh-baked runs of cinnamon rolls that I forgot to grab a napkin. Now you got cinnamon roll fingers, and they're so ooey. And gooey. I can't grab a spoon to dig into my delicious homemade chili. Maybe you should call for help? Oh, I'll call my mom. Oh, I've ruined my phone. Worth it, though. Come get Runza's homemade chili, fresh-baked cinnamon rolls, oh, and a napkin today. Because Runza makes it all better. Runza on Broadway by Menards and Yankton. When you need to be sure, make it Sherco. Smart Trailer from Sherco is still the most complete line of electric accessories for your grain trailer. Smart accessories such as the 4500 Series HD Electric Tarp, Pro Trap, and Auto Trap Electric Hopper Doors, and the Drive Max Auger Drive Kit from Sherco both offer convenience and peace of mind for operators. When only the best will do, give us a call at 1 800 474 8756 or find us online at Sherco.com. Make it Sherco. This is Lisa from Slumberland Furniture in Yankton. Our store is inspirational, modern, bright, and our warehouse is filled with the latest in furniture and home decor trends. You'll find the best brand name furniture and quality mattresses with the best customer service possible. Slumberland always guarantees the lowest prices. See us at 2401 Broadway in Yankton. Are you thinking of buying or selling your home? With low inventory and higher interest rates, the process can be frustrating. This is Deb Speck with Vision Real Estate, and I'd love to sit down with you and talk about our current market and how I can help you navigate through the process. Give me a call at 605-664-5555 and we'll explore the possibilities. Oh, back on the Lancer Locker for the final time here, wrapping up basketball season. A huge thank you to both Colin Othier and Alan Bertram, the two head coaches of Mount Marty Men's and Women's Basketball. We really do have some amazing coaches here at MMU um, getting ready for Next season, I'm very thankful for those two guys letting me ride the bus with them all season long, going on these road games. I get to go see them all and bring them to you here on KYNT. So that's that's a lot of fun. I appreciate those guys very much. We now are wrapping up basketball season, unfortunately. Our basketball seasons, once again, do end. Both teams a little lower in the wins department than they wanted to be, but man, do they have a bright future. Young, young cores for both teams. I cannot wait to see what they do next year. I can't wait. This year in the G-Pack, because of the COVID year and everybody coming back, this year was just senior-laden across the board. Both men's and women's basketball team, all the top teams in the conference are old, old teams that are graduating everybody. The Lancers, they don't graduate a whole lot because they were so young, which means the Lancers are going to be pretty good next year. I can't wait for that. They're going to compete. They're going to compete hard and i'm looking forward to it anyways this is the lancer locker on kynt i gotta wrap things up here well once again say upcoming schedule um in terms of baseball and softball they go to florida this weekend they're going to be down in florida both teams playing eight different teams 10 games in about a six day stretch down in florida we'll keep you updated throughout the week those games do start on the first for the softball team and on the second for the baseball team, that is Friday and Saturday. In terms of track and field, Lancers is sending 14 athletes to the NAIA Indoor Championships up in Brookings this weekend as well. We'll keep you updated on all of those. This is going to do it for the Lancer Locker this week as we bid adieu to basketball season. We will be back next season covering all of these games once again on KYNT. I'll be there myself. For the final time on the Lancer Locker on a Monday evening, thank you to Coach Colin Othier and Coach Alan Bertram, and thank you for listening to the Lancer Locker. My name is Tell Tanner. We'll see you next week.